Hey guys, we're back again. Uh, last time I left you, I was crimping on the injector plugs. Um, so I actually stayed up all by myself in isolation and crimped those. And um, yeah, it wasn't interrupted. So that's always a bonus. Yeah, spent the morning with my mate, Coffee One, Coffee Two, Red Bull, and my other friends over there, you and Tube. And my other friend here, fruit salad. It's all pretty quiet. It's actually pretty lonely. Hey guys, so we've got the car up in the air now. I um, just wanted to quickly show you through what we're going to try and attempt to do today. Um, I've got all the battery positives. Uh, this is all of the supplies that are going to our relays in our fuse box. Uh, the starter motor is just here and there is a giant battery cable around here somewhere from the old motor that used to be in it, which is just here. So I've got to, re-thread that somehow or find out where it's actually coming from the back of the car. So I'll figure that out. Uh, so we need to maybe shorten this. I'm not really sure yet how I'm gonna do that. But this, this will go onto the positive post of the starter motor, as will this. Uh, there will probably be another little uh, joiner which will go up to the alternator as well. So there'll be three, three maybe, uh, lugs that are going to go onto that starter. Um, it may be too much for that actual starter post, so we may need a relocation um, somewhere out of the way, maybe up here, where we can put all of those positives, just so that there's not 50 things hanging off the starter motor and it gets a bit cluttered and bulky and just maybe a risk of a short. So we'll sort that out soon. Um, I've got my starter here as well, so that's going to be on the starter motor, um, which is our trigger to make the solenoid and the throw out for the starter motor work. Got a crank sensor here as well. That's behind the starter motor on the LS engine. So might have to take the starter motor off and get our hands dirty, which always sucks, but we'll, uh, we'll see how we go with that. Uh, we may do that later and not even bother. I've, um, I've measured up the length good enough, so we don't have to plug it in today. We may do that when there's more mechanical things happening later. We've got our knock sensor wires here as well. So that's all in the same sort of area. I'm gonna try and route it all out of the way the best of this uh, dump pipe from this exhaust manifold. Uh, we might need to protect this with a bit of uh, conduit or sleeving just to protect the wires from the heat because uh, all sorts of crazy heat will be coming off this exhaust pipe. So. Um, Always got to try and route it as far away as possible. So we'll do our best there. On this side of the tunnel, um, I've got our speed sensor wires. Um, I'm not really sure where that's going to go at this point in time. So what I'm going to do is probably braid this at its full length. Um, I don't know if we're going to run a speed sensor here at the back of the gearbox on the, um, on the beginning of the tower shaft all the way that we actually need to run it all the way down to the back of the car. Either way, I'll probably need to make a little extension if it needs to go all the way to the back. But if it's at full length wire, we can get it to here. And if we've got a little bit left over, we can easily coil it up. Um, it's just gonna be easier for now. I may not even terminate it because I just don't know where it's gonna go because there is no tail shaft in this car yet. But later on, we'll, uh, we'll show you what we, what we actually end up doing with this. I haven't seen the trans brake yet, but I haven't looked for it yet. So I might call the owner and ask him if it is in the car somewhere. Um, I feel like most of the time it's actually ending up on this side. What I've done is I've made sure the loom that comes out to the middle at the top, uh, made sure that this is long enough so that it can either drip down this side or I can go over the other side and make it come out here. Either way, we'll probably ground it to the block or the gearbox 
Um, so that's fine. So that's our positive from our solid state relay. And there is a gearbox temperature. I am assuming the temperature will probably go here and try and face away from this exhaust pipe, uh, but it may also get tapped further around in this pan, anywhere in this pan. So I'm just leaving it long enough for now that it can go pretty much anywhere or around to the back, it can go pretty much everywhere. Um, and again, we can tuck it all the way back up on the top of the uh, bell housing, so it's not really a problem. So last night when I stayed up, I uh, got those injector plugs done and it actually looks pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with how it's actually turned out lengthwise. It all looks beautiful and nice and neat. I'm pretty happy with that. We've got the ability to move this whole loom backwards and forwards quite a long way to suit whatever needs to happen up this end, which is always the tricky part about building this out of the car. Um, I've done this side, the injector loom as well, which you can probably see in this camera. Uh, I've got my cam sensor, which is just down the front on the LS2. So I've got to put a plug on that one. Um, I've done very, very quickly a boost control solenoid down here as well. Um, I've wrapped this in a bit of conduit and some electrical tape just to safeguard it against all the hot area that's around here with the wastegate. There's a dump pipe here as well. So I'm just trying to protect that wire the best, to, best we can. Uh, the knock sensor for this bank is also on this side, so I've got to put a plug on this one as well. Um, before we were talking about running the actual uh, flex sensor and the fuel pressure from somewhere inside the car and trying to avoid all of this, um, there wasn't a lot of room under there with the heater box and the aircon system that is still in this car. So that was actually quite difficult. So I've actually then rerouted this back inside the grommet again. And what I'm actually gonna do with this is I'm gonna run it across the top here and then back down with these hoses. So we can do the flex sensor through a little hole down there and we'll do the fuel pressure sensor here. So there's not much I could do about that one. Um, I don't really like where the wire is going, but there isn't really an option in this um, in this application at the moment. Uh, so on this side, we've got the electronic throttle here, um, which is where I've got these six wires go for the six pins inside that uh, drive-by wire. Um, so we'll put a plug on that one very, very soon as well, but you can see how that one will sort of measure up and plug in there. I've got an air temperature uh, made for anywhere that's in this sort of area of the uh, intake manifold. I'm not really sure where it's gonna go, but I have a feeling it's gonna come out of here and then snake down through that giant hole down there. So that's the idea. So we can run that pretty much anywhere. I've got a set of fans, which are gonna come out up and over and around and plug into this plug that's here. Um, just important to note, I've matched the gauge of the fan wiring. There is a ground here as well. So that ground is gonna ground to the head of the engine. Uh, it's just a good solid ground that we're gonna use. And this wire down here, this is our alternator control. Uh, we're not gonna use a globe in this case to excite the alternators to start it charging. We're actually gonna try and control it through the ECU, like we mentioned in one of the first two episodes. Uh, so the plug for that is down there. So we'll, uh, we'll fang a plug on that as well. So I've quickly just thrown a plug and the cute little boot, uh, which actually just makes that, real, that pressure sensor look really, really nice. Um, I'm gonna work over this side for a little while now, and then I'm gonna tackle the drive-by-wire plug, uh, which is gonna be our e-throttle. So I'm gonna do that one up just here. I'm gonna quickly throw a plug on our air temp sensor, our alternator plug, and I've quickly just done the thermofan plug. I do want to use a bigger gauge plug. Um, 
but due to current lockdown, I can't just go out and grab one. So I am gonna maybe replace that one in the future. Um, I've just used the other side of what was on the fan already and just reuse the plug, but I do wanna change that in the future to a bigger gauge power um, plug because it might need to carry a bit more current um, on those hot summer days. Those fans will be working really, really hard in Australia. So I'm gonna quickly do the rest of those plugs now. Before I went ahead and crimped on these air temp plugs and the coil plugs and the flex fuel sensor plug, I thought I might just clear up a couple of things really, really quickly. These connectors that are commonly supplied with all the Haltech sensors that you buy, these are all pull. Um, the big tab on the top of this pin signifies that you actually push the wire all the way through first crimp the wire on the end and then pull it back down and that big tab actually slots into that slot right on there on that connector. Um, that's called a pull to seat connector. This one here is actually a push to seat connector. So you can see it's a very, very different style of pin where it's actually got some uh, places here on the pin where it actually locks. See those little tabs here? That's what those little tabs actually lock into on that, on that pin. So you can often tell it's actually got a big cap that actually locks all those um, tabs in place and keeps that pin retained in its little space there. Same with the flex fuel, um, uses the same type of pin. Uh, this pressure sensor as well also has these little tabs on it that locks into the, the little hole on that pin and the little cage holds all of those tabs in place so that the pin can't back, back out. These pressure sensor plugs, which come with all of the Haltech sensors, use this uh, use a similar, very, very similar style, uh, but these are also pull to seat. So you push the wire all the way through, crimp it, and then pull it back through. If you follow the instruction guide that comes with every single plug and sensor from the Haltech manual uh, that is supplied with the plug and the sensor, you won't go wrong. So I'm quickly just going to wire this air temp sensor here. Um, this is a pull to seat. So we're going to quickly thread the wires through this connector. Um, I've pre-heat shrunk this one. So when we're done, we can push the heat shrink up and then melt it for a nice, neat installation. We keep going, push these wires through. It will be a little bit tricky the very first time because the rubber is nice and sealed so we'll push that through. Don't be afraid to push this all the way back if you need the room for your specific stripper. Strip back a tiny little bit of insulation so we've got some wire available. Take your pull to seat pin. Uh, there's no rubber uh, grommets that go on the back of this one or seals because the connector has already got one on the back of it. So it's one less thing to worry about because you're already trying to think a couple of steps ahead by pulling these wires through in the first place. So we just make sure that those crimps are done up nice and tight on the actual copper itself. Just twist this one. Um, always try and keep your pin that you've just done out of the way. Um, can't, can't even tell you how many times I've crimped this pin, got it absolutely beautiful, gone to crimp this one and somehow got this, this one tangled up in my crimper and absolutely mangled it. So try and keep it out of the way. Otherwise you're just making more work for yourself. Nice and tight. That's all done now. So we can pull that back through and there's little fins on these pins. We just gotta flip them around so they go into those two little slots there. So we'll do the ground one first and click. You can hear a really, really faint click when you do it. And that'll be a click. So they are both seated. 
I'll push that rubber seal back up, which has got a little bit of a twist on it. I'll just gently caress that back in. Pull our heat shrink back up to its position. I'm just gonna give it a quick hit with the torch. We've got it beautifully crimped, ready to go, air temp sensor. Crimped on my pins and seals onto my wires for my throttle body here. Um, now I'm up to the part where I need to know what the pin out is and the wire assignment for this particular plug. Um, for me, that was as simple as jumping on the internet, going to Google and typing in this engine's throttle body pin out, um, and it came up pretty easily. So um, if you do have something pretty weird and obscure and you really, really get stuck, um, always just give us a call or send us an email here at Haltech and one of our representatives will be able to help do some research with you to try and find out what your particular throttle body pinout needs to be. Uh, we may even have a document that's already done that we could just supply you so that you could get your Haltech wider. What I want to talk about right now is these two wires. You'll see one is a normal insulated PVC wire that comes with majority of the loom. And then you've got these AVIs, which is AVI one and six in the elite premium and basic loom. And SPIs, one, two, three, four, or DPIs, one, two, three, four. One of the most common questions we actually get in regards to these particular wires is, why does my signal always appear to be grounded? And the most common reason for that is, is because there is actually two layers of wire inside these shielded wires. And most commonly, what people do is they just get their strip up and go honk like that, reef it apart, and then they just pull all the insulation back and go, sweet, I've got one wire there, crimp the grounds, which are the shield wires and the signal wires together, they crimp their pin on that and then wonder why their sensor never works properly. And that's because we've actually got the shield, which is a insulated layer that is protecting the signal wire inside. This is actually connected to ground back at the ECU connector. So we don't want to short our signal to ground. What we actually want to do is trim back very, very carefully the shield wires and then we want to make a clean cut at the signal wire up here and then crimp our wire to the signal wire only. So here we've got our normal wire, which is just a single layer of PVC covering the copper. But this is our multi-strand, which I was talking about, a shielded wire, which has got a layer of shield around it. If we undo the shield, off that layer of PVC inside. You'll see it's just like a wire on the inside, but we need to carefully pull all that shield back out of the way. Just give that a quick cut with your side cutters and make a nice, neat cut so that it's all protected and not gonna interfere with the actual signal. But we need to have the signal wire available clear and free of this so that it gets the actual signal from the sensor it's being attached to. Last few things we've got to do for today. I've got the factory oil pressure sensor, which is hiding down the back of the manifold here. So I'm gonna throw a plug on that one really quickly. Uh, I'm gonna braid these wires here with some of the sheathing. Um, I'm gonna separate these down at this join that I made here. So we'll make a big fat common one to here, and then we'll split all of these, except for the power ones, um, and then We'll, we'll run that back down under and we might need to just throw a little bit of protection over these wires as it runs past the manifold.
So a quick recap of what we've managed to crimp today. Uh, we've done the actual drive-by wire uh, assembly itself. So the actual butterfly will move now. I've done a crank sensor really quickly here today. The knock sensor, I've put a little ring on the starter motor and just put a little band on it just to signify that it is gonna go with the battery positive stud, um, just to show that it is not a ground wire. It is gonna be a positive power to the star wire. Got my ground over here. Got my air temp sensor, which I've terminated. My alternator wire, uh, which is gonna control the alternator voltage. Got our plug, which is temporary for our fans until we can source a better version. Um, I've also done fuel pressure, which is gonna live over here in the sensor, which is coming in the reg. Um, our injector plugs are all done. I've got the cam sensor that's done and that's ready to go under here as well. I've got the other knock sensor, which is buried and stuck and there it is. Our other knock sensor, so that's for the other bank. That one's done as well. I've got a boost control solenoid wired up. So I've got a little bit of protecting, protective covering as it is right next to the turbo itself. So we've um, protected that the best we can. Um, haven't measured out my coils yet, but I'm about to go under the car to do the flex, which is running down here. So that's running through a little sneaky little hole down there, which is actually in the car already. So um, we've utilized that factory hole. And you can see the flex sensor just under there. So that's where this wire is gonna go, down here somewhere. So after giving the customer a really quick call, uh, we talked about where the wideband box will go in the engine bay. Um, it's not a showpiece, it's not the centerpiece of this engine, so we're going to try and sneak it away somewhere quietly, uh, but still functional. Uh, the beauty of the waterproof box means we can put it out in the engine bay and not clutter up the inside with more devices. Um, we're going to pull apart the CAN cable and then sneak it maybe through the wiring harness when we need to do that but we could also use maybe this clutch hole or we could use one of the other holes that are already existing in the car. There is a couple here that we might be able to utilize. Um, so we'll figure that out when it comes to actually fitting up the harness where we want this cable to actually go. If we are gonna run this through the firewall grommet, um, it is very, very easy to pull this connector apart. This comes with the wide band and is the communications cable that goes from the wide band down to the ECU can plug. Um, it, it's very, very simple to pull this plug apart so you can get it nice and compact and fit it through the grommet where the loom is. We're just gonna pull out the locking tab, which comes in the connector. Then we use one of our uh, removal tools, our pin removal tools, which comes in our crimping set from Haltech. And there is a four little tabs that we're just gonna flick really, really quickly and just pull down on the, each of those wires. And then it simply comes apart just like that. So we can throw some tape around that so these pins don't jag on any other bit of wire or braid. And then we'll simply push this in through the grommet and then we'll have this connector simply put back together. Once it's back in the engine bay, we'll use the same color code that's on the back of this connector to know where each of those pins needs to go on this connector. So last quick thing for today is just to plug in this knock sensor, which I terminated earlier on. And that will be us for the day, I reckon. Click, beautiful. Um, I've just got a couple of connectors to do, um, which will be pretty quick and pretty easy. Um, this one's a trans brake, so we're just gonna leave this one because I don't know where it's actually gonna go yet. The temp will just get a simple uh, oil temperature sensor plug, which is the Haltech one. So we'll just put that one on there. And then we've got our yellow wires, which are up in the engine bay. Um, I've still got to do those. Those are our ignition coils. So while the car's up in the air, I might measure where they're gonna, how far away they are from each other and how long we might need those wires to be. Cause it's gonna be a tricky one to try and crimp it where it is. So I may actually end up unplugging everything, pulling the loom back inside the car a little bit 
and then doing some of that inside the car. While we're inside the car tomorrow, we'll probably do the accelerator pedal as well. Uh, find the ignition switch, plug in our Haltech dash, and then we'll see how we are from there.